Generally, when you find out the sex of the baby, that takes about half an hour. Ours took about an hour and a half, maybe. Guy who was doing the x-rays shook my hand, looked me in the eyes and said, good luck. And I thought that was kind of odd. Like, why would he tell me good luck after an x-ray? And so we go home and I'm like, oh, it's a boy. We're all happy and everything. And then the next day at work, I get a message on my phone. Can you please call us back? And my heart kind of just sunk because it's like, well, what, what changed from yesterday to today? Remember I had a gasoline receipt. And I was sitting there jotting everything down in the back of what she was telling me and, and every little thing that she was mentioning. And so and then when I, when I went home, I took out this little piece of paper and I told Robert, I was like, okay, this is what she told me. He said, your son has um, an issue with his um, intestines and his lungs aren't developing properly. And um, you're probably gonna have to terminate I'm like, no, 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 We're, there's something else that can be done. I was like, let's look at this again. So they did more ultrasounds just to, you know, put me at ease, but I'm just like, there's gotta be something, you know, otherwise there wouldn't be a reason we'd find it so early on. So then we talked to the genetics counselor. She's the one who initially called me. And she said, there's a study going on at UCSF. It's still called an experimental surgery right now. And you might be a candidate. And so we met this lovely couple uh, Lori and Robert, just wonderful people, and, and you got that right away. But they got this terrible news that Miles had a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. The main problem with diaphragmatic hernia is that the diaphragm, which is a thin muscle uh, between the abdomen or stomach and the chest, uh, doesn't form completely. And that happens very early in the pregnancy, around uh, eight to 10 weeks. And as a result, the organs that were supposed to grow in the abdomen uh, come up into the chest. And so the critical problem really with congenital diaphragmatic hernia, it starts with a simple anatomic problem, a simple anatomic defect, a hole in the diaphragm, and then it leads to disastrous physiologic consequences, which is that the lungs don't grow adequately, and then you have a baby born who can't breathe. So the only way to deal with that would be to make the lung bigger before birth. And the doctors at the time said, you can't do that. The kid's still inside his mom. But I was just so naive, I thought that's the way to do it. In the fetal surgery, they insert a balloon into his trachea. Uh, they go in through two little scopes. They inflate the balloon, and this balloon blocks the fluids that would normally escape in a normal pregnancy. They would escape into the amniotic fluid. The fluids then are forced to balloon the lungs, which then push against all the intestines. Basically, it just pushes everything down a little bit so the lungs can develop. Since Dr. Harrison started the whole field really 35, 40 years ago, our goal has been we want to use every innovative technologic advantage for the health of our kids, but do it in a judicious way. Knowing that UCSF was a birthplace of CDH operations, we're getting the Michael Jordan of surgeries. So we were just overwhelmed. In my mind, I was just like, it's not about me. You guys, I, I'm pretty sure, like I just knew in my heart that I was like, I'm gonna be fine. Just, you know, do what you guys do best because other than that, there wasn't any other option. You know, in most places, you say, no, are you crazy? <laughs> We're not doing that. But they say, oh, OK, well, if, you know, if you study it in animals, it looks like it's a, there's more tolerance here. So here is a place where you not only have an institution that wants to see these kinds of things happen, but you have an absolutely enormous amount of brain power and goodwill to draw upon. Yeah. Miles Mitchell is the culmination of three decades of work to try to solve this problem of diaphragmatic hernia. And his work is spectacular. So Miles today is a ball of energy. <laughs> Amazing. He's got too much energy. Way too much energy. I think children like Miles can teach us about how to better take care of these children in the future. Because we have a lot of the technology now that keeps these children alive, 
but what are we doing to them long term and their families? And I think it's our responsibility to continue to take care of them. To see Miles so happy and so healthy, um, when you know what could have happened, it's, it's what we come to work for. And to have that kind of interaction with a family and to really uh, be part of their family forever and for them to be part of our family forever is a profound, amazing experience. And just having him has like made me a better person. It's just, just, it's just great. I really don't feel that I could have made any other decision except the one that I did because he's, he is amazing. <laughs>